Hi, and welcome to my channel, Naughty Gnome Crafts. My name is Sarah, and you can find me as Naughty Gnome on Instagram. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a pattern review. Every month in my community tab, I post a poll and I let my viewers choose which of my makes that they want to see a detailed review on. And this month, there was an overwhelming vote. Over 50% of the vote was for the Itch to Stitch Mountain View jeans. So that's what I'm going to be bringing to you today. The pattern is described as Want the look of classic jeans but with less fuss? The Mountain View pull-on jeans are your new best friends. Made with stretch denim or twill fabric, these straight-cut jeans give you the everyday ease and comfort you crave. Pair the Mountain View with a jacket and you'll look composed. Pair them with a t-shirt and you'll look casual. No one will ever know that they are pull-on jeans. Your secret is safe with me. And then the features are slightly high mid-rise, wide waistband for tummy control, straight cut legs with instructions on how to make them slim, four pockets, seam along back legs for greater shaping, faux fly with top stitching, and the pattern comes with a layers feature. And this pattern comes in sizes double zero up to 40, which is an incredible size range. I will put the size charts up on the screen. And I made a size zero at the waist and I graded to a two at the hip. And it was actually a very, very simple pattern to grade because the waistband is so wide. I just started with a zero at the top of the waistband and then graded to a two at the bottom of the waistband. And then the rest of the pants, I used the size two. Now, why did I want to make these jeans? I've been experiencing some weight fluctuations and some issues with bloating in probably about in the past year or so. And I wondered if um, pull on jeans might be a little bit more comfortable for those fluctuations. I never actually worn anything like that before, but I thought I would just give it a try. And um, I figured that if I were making jeans that stretch denim overall would probably be a little bit more comfortable than rigid denim. So that's why I chose this particular pattern. Now let's talk about fit adjustments. Now every time I make a pair of pants, generally speaking, the fit adjustments that I have to make are extensive, so I'm not going to sit here and read off every single thing that I did. But what I will say is that for the length measurements, I shortened the a half an inch above the knee and three and a half inches below the knee, and the jeans are full length, they're not cropped or anything. I also made my normal alterations to add a little bit of space um, at the inseam for my inner thigh. And I did also find that I needed to shorten the back leg a little bit and having that seam line in the back actually made it really easy to adjust. Um, basically what I did was I made a fisheye dart where I took extra length out of that back thigh. So I really liked having that seam for extra fitting, um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that seam um, in another section. So I did make a muslin for this pattern because it was my first time making it and these are relatively fitted. And I actually used the exact same fabric for my muslin that I did for the uh, eventual pants. The fabric was a 97% cotton, 3% spandex fabric that I bought from Joann's. I had purchased five yards and between the muslin and the actual pants, I ended up using about four of those yards. So I still have a little bit left that I can use to make a pair of shorts or perhaps a skirt. The fabric I thought was actually a pretty decent quality. I don't exactly know how many ounces it is, but I'd say it's on the lighter side, maybe like a nine ounce or possibly a 10 ounce denim. It is quite stiff, I would say, but I just, it's one of those things that denim is a little bit stiff. It'll get softer as you wash and wear it more. And I could have done some distressing on these jeans, but because this was my first time making them, I decided to just make them as is and save myself some of the hassle. Um, so there's no distressing or anything on this pair. I used a contrast gold top stitching thread that I had in my stash that I had purchased from Wawak many years ago. Um, and yeah, I just used the gold top stitching thread on the top and then on the bottom, I just used the regular navy thread. I found the instructions for this pattern really clear and easy to follow. Itch to Stitch in general has really good instructions. Um, she uses diagrams rather than photographs, which is my personal preference. And I did not have any issues with constructing these by following the instructions. If you're enjoying this review so far, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button because it helps more people find my channel. Thanks so much. So I made a couple of minor design changes. Um, one thing I did was I changed the pocket in the front to just be one piece. This was something that I saw Karina do from Lifting Pins and Needles, and I will go ahead and link her video in the description box below. Um, she mentioned how to just take out the seam and make the pocket bag just one piece that you simply fold over. It eliminates one of the seams that there's less bulk on the inside, and I really liked the idea of that, so I did that as well for mine. 
Um, the inside of my pockets is, or my pocket material on the inside is some leftover cotton lawn that um, I got, I used for my chalk and notch wren blouse. And I think it works really nice with the jeans. It's just a nice little pop of color and I enjoyed using that. The other design change that I made was that I omitted top stitching on that back leg seam. I don't particularly care for the way that that looks and I certainly don't want to draw attention to it. So I elected not to do any top stitching at all on that back seam. However, actually wearing the jeans, I've realized that it does rub a little bit on the back of my leg. So I think if I were to make this in the future, if I were to do, if I were to do it all over again, I would probably go ahead and top stitch that seam down with just regular navy sewing thread so that it wouldn't stick out visually, but perhaps it might make the seam a little bit more comfortable. I'm not really sure because I didn't top stitch it. I don't know what that's like, but definitely I can tell you the way that I wear the jeans. I can feel that seam and it does bug me. These pants went together fairly easily. Um, I think putting on the back pockets is the final step that you do. And it makes sense because you can try them on and make sure that you like the placement. But I will say that I did have a little bit of a hard time stitching on the back pockets after the entire thing was completed. Because there's no zipper in the front, um, it was just a little bit difficult to maneuver underneath my machine. But I managed it and I think that it looks really good. I like the way that my top stitching looks. Um, I really like the straight leg feature of this jean. I think that it's a very flattering look. I think that it's a nice clean line and I will definitely make more straight leg jeans in the future. Now let's talk about where I ran into some problems. So um, one of the things that I did was I did not have half inch elastic, which is what it calls for to put into the waistband. So I used what I had on hand and that happened to be three quarter inch elastic. And I think there's a possibility that I may have cut the elastic a little bit too short. Um, I'm not quite sure, but what I will say is the first time that I wore these jeans, I found them extremely constricting and uncomfortable over my gut area. I just, I, by the end of the day, I just wanted to rip them off because I was just having a really hard time um, feeling very, very uncomfortable and constricted. And I just, I hated the way that they felt. So I decided not to completely give up on the jeans. I'm like, how can I fix this? So what I elected to do was I thought that perhaps the rise was a little bit too high. I forgot to mention when I was doing my alterations, I actually increased the rise by half an inch because I wanted it to sit a little bit higher on me. But now I think maybe that was a mistake. Um, so it, it was a very, it was a pretty high waisted pant and I was thinking that maybe it was too high. So I removed the waistband and I cut it in half. Basically I cut off the top half and so that it would sit lower on my body. And then when I put the waistband back onto the pants, instead of using that three quarter inch elastic, I instead used clear elastic and I just ran it, um, uh, through my serger when I did the top seam, I didn't stretch it at all. And this is a technique that I learned from Green Style Creations when I make their leggings, they tell you to do that. And when you put the clear elastic in the seam but it's not stretched, that just helps the prevent the fabric from stretching out and helps it stay in place, but it doesn't actually do anything to like suck you in. So I thought that that might work better. And I will say that the clear elastic seems to do its job. However, when I put on the pants after doing this alteration, I realized immediately that I had cut too much off of the waistband and now they were low rise. I don't like a low rise pants. Um, I definitely feel like I've been there, done that, not going back to that again. And I'm pretty much in danger of plumber butt every time I wear these pants because you bend over and they just want to pull down in the back. Um, so these jeans are no longer something that I feel comfortable wearing outside of the house. Um, I do, I have actually worn them quite a few times just at home as like loungewear kind of things. And they are a lot more comfortable now, but certainly if I were to do this over again, I probably would not, um, well, I definitely would not cut the waistband in half. Uh, I might just take a, probably like that half of an inch off of the waistband that I had added and then maybe just left it like that. However, I don't really like the look of the wide waistband anyway. It's just not a design thing that I like. I prefer to wear cropped shirts or tuck my tops in. When I had the wide waistband, I just could not find a way to wear my tops the way that I like them and not have it look weird. I just didn't like the way that that looked. 
So for that reason, and because the back seam um, on the back of the legs does bother me, I don't think that I would make these pants again. It's kind of a shame because I actually think that the fit on these is pretty good. There's just a few little tweaks that I would make if I were gonna do another pair to just get the fit even better. But generally speaking, I think that these fit me really well except for the waistband issue. It's just that the style of it is not my favorite. Um, I think that if I wanna make a pair of stretch jeans, I should just go ahead and make one of the other patterns that's in my stash. I have the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans and I have the Closet Core Ginger jeans, which I've actually made the Ginger jeans um, a few times before. Um, earlier on in my sewing journey before I knew what I was doing, so they didn't fit me very well. But I think if I tried that pattern again, I could probably get a better fit this time around. And yeah, I just think that that's probably the way that I would go rather than investing more time in doing this pattern. But I do feel like I learned a lot from this um, particular pattern because I like that straight leg and I really want to incorporate that in the future. I do plan to keep these jeans in my wardrobe. As I said, they're actually really good for just sort of bumming around the house, but I definitely would not wear them to work. I don't think that I'd wear them outside of the house. Um, but they are relatively comfortable just to lounge around in. So for now, I'm gonna hang on to them. Now, because I don't really plan on wearing these um, outside of my house, I did not really think it made sense to do a styling video because I'd have to wear my tops untucked and this is not the way that I like to wear my clothes. So instead, I'm just gonna insert a clip of me wearing a crop top with the pants so you can see what the full thing looks like. Keep in mind that, again, Britney Spears circa 2001 is not my jam, so I would never actually wear this, but I'm just wearing the crop top so that you can see the full, um, what the full jeans looks like without anything covering it. And yeah, I, that was my experience with sewing the Mountain View jeans. I know that so many people in the sewing community love that pattern. I think it's just not for me, and that's okay. If you want to keep watching my reviews, check out this one that I did of the Sew Over It Eve dress that I did as a collab with Michelle Says Again. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.